I'll entertain a motion to come out of executive session. I move. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to come out of executive session. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we are back in session. Um, and so I'm going to make a motion to approve the reclassification uh, for the um, Laura Kuhn uh, at a salary of 55000 What? Do you prefer job description less? And as yeah. office manager, and uh, promotion to office okay. manager. Yeah. Is that all the detail we need? Mm -hmm. Effective date. Yes, sir. Effective date, uh, Monday, August 19th, 2019. Second. Oh. Move to second it. Is there discussion? I uh, fully see the value of this individual to the county. However, I happen to disagree with the tune of the increase because it does not conform to the policy. So I will be voting against this. And I'll point out, I'll, I'll be voting for it, but Bill may find it. Uh, I may find a way to cut some money from him later, so beware. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. But okay. I, I do believe that she's worth the, the money being suggested. Any other comments? Discussion? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. And the motion carries three to one. Thank you all. You're welcome. Okay, we're down to item number eight, um, finally. <laughs> I, I believe, um, um, uh, Madam President, that we are, um, uh, Ms. Grove wants to skip forward a little bit and uh, do away with the issues because we anticipate that there may be an executive so we can do the non executive session the non, the the non things that don't require that sessions yes. and then move on to yeah, so we can session. just go through with what all right so that takes us to item number nine then a discussion to replace the jcda board member um this item i brought up a few weeks ago uh put on the agenda However, um, at the time, I was requesting an executive session, um, and which did not happen. So, but I do feel it needs to be brought to the attention of the commission. So I brought it back up for discussion this evening. So let me find my notes. Here it is. Okay, on uh, June 16th at the, the um, uh, JCDA Jefferson County Development Authority meeting, there was an executive session uh, with regard to um, confidential information uh, with regard to hiring an attorney uh, for a, a case that had been uh, filed. Um, so there was some information, uh, all the information, uh, uh, the information that was brought out um, during the executive session was of a confidential nature. Back on July 12th, one of the members of the uh, Jefferson County Development Authority at a town hall hosted by Delegate Doyle um, failed to comply with confidential confidentiality agreement that he signed with the F, uh, JCDA by disclosing the information that had been discussed during that executive session of the JCDA that was held back in June during the regular meeting. To me, that is a very, um, that's a major concern. We have to be able to trust the people that we put on these boards to follow the agreements that they sign. And he did sign the confidentiality agreement. And so that's why I brought this up. I mean, you have to have confidence in the people that you place on these boards. And if we can't trust them to comply with the agreements, the confidentiality agreement, in my opinion, I believe that they uh, need to be um, held accountable for that. And I believe that if you can't trust them, they shouldn't be on the board. So that's why I brought this back to uh, the commission again. I feel strongly about it. 
I think that you can't just go blabbing uh, out in public. Um, and it was actually posted on social media. Somebody filmed it, and it was posted on social media, which is how I saw it. And um, so I think that it's important that, um, that we prevent people like that from being on the boards that we entrust with the, uh, especially on, on things that, that are so important to the future of the county for economic development. There's nothing to say that he uh, would or would not do that again, but I don't trust him to follow the rules, and so I think that he should be removed. And so I'm gonna move that we remove Bob McEchern from the Jefferson County Development Authority because of the of the uh, breach in the confidentiality that he signed. I'm just going to second this for discussion purposes only. Okay, sure. Okay, obviously I'm not a part of the Development Authority, nor am I privy to anything that is said in executive session on that or any other board. Mm -hmm. If that did occur. Someone needs to submit an ethics complaint and let the Ethics Commission determine if there was a violation of the Open Meetings Act. If there is found to be a violation, I think that would be grounds to remove anybody from any board. That, that's where my standpoint is. I'm not going to remove anybody right now as we're sitting until it's been completely vetted. You're probably the only commissioner here that has been part of that executive session. If I look at the video, I have no way of determining if it was or was not an executive session. I understand. I'm going to say the same thing as far as that, and, but I'm going to add one thing. I probably was there at the town hall. I don't remember, but then again, I wasn't part of any meetings at the JCDA, so I may not have realized that that was an issue. But I do, I want to point out, I. At least part of that town hall, I was there. Um, uh, and I will say, somebody asked me if I had talked to the gentleman about it, and I did not because he had talked later on when all this came up. He had come over to talk to me, and I said, I can't talk to you. And I told him I couldn't talk to him. He didn't know what I was talking about, but I told him I couldn't talk to him. And actually, I told him to talk to you, but I don't know if he ever did or not. No, he did not. I've not heard from him. Okay. But uh, there's another issue I, I need to bring up on this, and, I, and it may be an issue for Nathan. If he was taken off the board, does the board cease to function at that point? Um, I would believe so, because he's the Harper's Ferry representative, isn't he? Bolivar. Bolivar, yeah. I think that's, it's, it's unclear, but that has sort of been what we've, what we've followed based on some of the prior issues that have been raised in front of the commission. Um, because we had postponed uh, operations at some point while we were waiting for various people from different municipalities, different groups to be appointed to the board. So, it might. It might, yes. I, I, the reason I bring this up is did not talk to this gentleman at all, but I did talk to the mayor about other people being available, and she said it was hard as hell to get two people to, to sign up to consider. So I think there might be a problem getting anybody from Bolivar. And I did, I did contact the mayor as well and told her that um, just to be prepared that I, I bring it up but I didn't know what the Commission would decide to do but just to put her on notice that it was my intention that I, I felt that he needed to be removed from that board well, I mean I think, I, I think it would go back it would go back to the yeah. you know it would go back to the duty of of the municipality to send us someone to well, it's got to send us three don't they? I understand yes yeah. but I'm just saying they still have a duty to appoint an appropriate person so or to a point. So, uh, you Let know, me ask you this. So, could we um, put, if it's the will of the Commission, could we put Mr. McEdron on notice and ask Bolivar to look for more, another person that be appropriate? 
I mean, I think that he he's probably on notice as a result of this here. <laughs> so, uh, so I would I would think that his um, um, you know I would think that if what you're talking about is is telling him that uh, it is highly likely that that at least you would bring this before the commission again. And yeah, you couldn't tell Bolivar to that this is a potential and and that uh, you would like to uh, nominees for a potential future appointment, but you don't really have the authority, you know, to appoint them until the commission so chooses to exactly. That's to right. Do I understand that. that. Yeah. So I'd have to amend my motion. Uh, to do that. Just from my standpoint, I, one of four of us right here even knows or does not know if the open meetings was violated. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not saying you're lying or someone else is or they're not. Or I have no way of knowing because mm -hmm. I was not there in that executive session. Yeah. So I mean, you need to do some sort of investigation at the Ethics Commission, submit a complaint, let them investigate and make the determination. If they find that, yes, he, he or she in fact did violate the open meetings then bring it back to the commission and then that's a third party that's investigated make the determination and then it, it is what it is you can't violate the open meetings act and and i think there's a lot of wisdom in that um i suppose the only caveat would be if there is open public evidence that you know perhaps that that you know the gentleman or stated that and, and i haven't i don't know anything about this okay but let's just say for a hypothetical the gentleman stated we talked about this in executive session and i'm going to tell you what we said in executive session you know publicly so there's evidence and then that creates not in your mind not an ethics violation per se but what you're saying is you feel like he breached a duty that he um, placed on himself by agreeing to the confidentiality agreement. That's what you're saying, and that's why you would move to remove him. I think mm -hmm. there's a problem, and I'm, I don't like agreeing with Josh, but I, I think it's there's a problem so if you try to get the evidence out there about a confidential meeting by bringing out a confidential meeting. I think that may be a problem. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't know. I don't know about the circumstances of this, of this case at all. All I'm saying is, if the gentleman has publicly um, committed to the fact that he is violating that confidence, violating that agreement, and there's evidence of that, then I see that as slightly different than what you're saying, Josh. Absent that, I tend to believe that Josh is correct. So, I did not maybe see this whole video. Was that the case? Was I don't know. I don't know. Was it, hey guys, we just talked about this in executive session and this is what was said. I mean, to that I, tune, I mean, yeah, there's an issue with that. Because you're openly admitting what you're doing is wrong, essentially. Well, I think the video would have to be reviewed again. So, okay, so I will withdraw my motion at this time. And, uh, and um, at least. Uh, review the video again, and uh, I guess I should have, I'm not sure how to proceed with that, but uh, <coughs> I should uh, maybe bring it to the, bring it to the commission so that you can all see it, or yeah. how should I do that? And, well, typically in decisions like this, you make decisions based on what is, evidence is presented to the commission as a whole, so I would think that that would be the appropriate um, way, if you wanted to present evidence to the commission, would be to have the commission as a as a body. Okay. Should, should a not a notice, but should a note or a letter be sent to him saying, just reminding him of the confidentiality? I don't know. I mean, there wouldn't be anything wrong with that if if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, I don't, if, if we can have unanimous consent to do that, I have no problem with that. 
he, he's read it before. I mean, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Well, I'll make a motion that we send him a letter reminding him that he has an obligation under the confidentiality of JCDA or Second. whatever statement he signed there. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay, so we will move on to the next item on the agenda. And um, the not, item number 10, the Sheriff's Commission. And this is um, just your approval of the commission, which he is entitled to under the statute, but it needs to be in the minutes before the payroll can pay it out. <clears throat> I move to approve the computation of the 2019 Sheriff's Commission. Second. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay, now we're down to uh, county administrator reports. And I think we've, other than that, we've exhausted the agenda, except for Nathan's. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we had talked about when we approved the Poor House Farm lease the last time, um, putting it out for an RFP. And normally I would just put that RFP out, but I didn't because I wasn't sure how you wanted me to proceed. So I drafted the RFP and it's really short and sweet to include the lease of 17 acres of cropland slash pasture land. So it presumes that that use stays, that it that we're renting it out as farmland. Um, and then I, um, the proposals would be due on September, September 13th, I think, 2020, um, and or 2019, I'm sorry, ahead. And um, they would be due in our office by 2 p.m. and then we would present it, the contract for you for approval um, at that next September meeting in the evening. So I wasn't sure, and basically it just as a lease of approximately 17 acres of cropland, I'll attach a contract which I did update and added some provisions to, so a sample contract. And basically it says, you know, give us your price for 17 acres, what your price per acre is. So if that's okay with you, I will send that RFP out. But if you want it to advertise the use for something else, including farmland and additional uses, I would need to change the RFP. And I'm just looking for direction from you, from the commission. I can't imagine what other uses we would put that to. Could you put a clause in, but we'll accept potential other uses or something? If someone wants to propose a use other than farmland. No impact uses. Okay. Nothing that... Um, changes dramatically what it could be used for in the future. Okay. I can do some, I can yeah, do I that. Jump like someone wants to make like a beer garden that pops up for like a month or something, right. that's fine. Okay. But don't build a house on it. Okay. You know. Somebody come up with something creative, who knows? Yeah. I mean. So other low impact uses that will not change the character of the property. Sounds good. I'm, I'm agree with that. Is everybody else satisfied with that? All right, sounds good. Can we approve that or anything? We're good. Um, I just want to just go ahead and just say to put the RFP out for 17 acres of cropland slash pasture land and consideration of other uses that will not, what I just said, other uses that will not change the character of the property, other low impact uses. And that's unanimous consent, right? Okay, that's fine. That'll Is work. everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, next, approval revision to policy 305. Similar to the insurance issue, um, I was made aware late yesterday afternoon that there was um, an allegation that um, I may have a conflict of interest. I guess allegation is the wrong word. Someone has said that they believe that I may have a conflict of interest in dealing with some of the issues related to this. And uh, although I do not concede that I have a conflict of interest, and I may seek um, clarification of that, I, uh, again, because Mr. Um, Greg was here with, a, uh, with a, a couple of other issues, I asked him to sit in. So I'm going to not be involved in this particular issue, and Mr. Kennedy is going to be here. Okay. Um, I would say that Mr. Kennedy um, was only made aware of this issue uh, 
just a couple of hours ago. So I think that um, um, it would be unlikely if uh, you dive deep into some of these issues. I'm uh, expecting that um, it might need to be a question for another day. Okay. Okay. So we revised this policy, and you kind of heard some of this before with the Millennium discussion about, and this is different than what's in your packet because it's, it's kind of evolved. Um, the Millennium discussion and receiving the backup when we're signing off on expenditures that are coming out of 401. Um, and we were, you know, uh, Michelle was asking to see that payroll deductions were actually deducted from employee paychecks. Otherwise, we don't know that they were deducted. Um, so I will say that, so it changes that. That's where we're getting that it's requiring that the payroll be in, input into the system. Now, depending upon how we proceed with payroll implementation, that would already be in the system because we're going to be, you know, the system will be running payroll as well. Right now we're running dual payrolls to make sure that it's, that it's working appropriately. And, um, we received a letter from Mr. Casto on behalf of the county clerk. And so I just, I have provided them a copy of that. Um, I will say that we did change the signature key portion. Um, I actually mailed that third signature key back to Tyler today uh, via FedEx and I have the tracking number. So we received um, that signature key in, um, in error. We did not order it. There's not an invoice for that signature key. We ordered a black box. Uh, the black box was, then the black box is actually what creates the signature. Um, so initially, I believe that the team that we had assembled for this project with Michelle as the project manager, I thought we had agreed that there would be one printer in the finance office for both payroll and um, AP. And then I think the clerk decided that she wanted two printers. So in, in order to get two printers, we had to order a black box in order for the, for the signature. Yes, yeah, so we had two black boxes. If you look at the... Yes, and if you look at the invoice, it says black box only. When they sent the black box, they inadvertently sent a key. When Michelle got the key, she brought it down to me. I gave it to C and D. But we have, we've, we've put that, we've sent that back to Tyler. I FedExed it back to them. That's what we should have done to begin with. So we no longer have that third key. So we put the policy back to the, to the second, to just the two keys, one of which is in the clerk's office, and I think the tax office has one. I want to interrupt you. Who previously was printing checks. Was it the, always the clerk's office or was it the finance office? It's always the finance office. So the clerk never was No, printing. the clerk. Yeah. The, the finance, finance is part office. of the... Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Was the clerk That's right. office printing those checks, That's right. historically speaking? Yes, yes. Always. always. And we're not suggesting taking that out of the clerk's office. Okay. Um, and, and if I could just go through some of the things as well. Um, on the first page, the... Um, AP definition was ex just expanded to clear up some confusion. Um, those invoices that we get for insurance payments, those are actually AP invoices. They're, they're not payroll. Um, then on the second page, I just wanted to point out that under, at the very bottom where it has non-P card invoices, our policy has always been that the paper invoice, all pages front and back, should then be uh, available, and, and we had changed it to be then be scanned in electronically. So we are currently not in compliance with that policy, um, and the policy was in place since 2014. Um, because that policy does not incorporate the new security features uh, for that sensitive backup that would be included with those AP invoices associated with insurance payments, we felt the need to add an additional section that says on page three that pay, paper invoice for payroll deduction checks processed, and we discussed this earlier tonight, um, should be included from all vendors, all pages front and back with reconciliation reports and deduction reports to verify the actual legal amount withheld from employee pay for each deduction. And that the first page of the deduction should be attached separately and marked as confidential for accounts payable. Um, and that first page is usually very nondescript, very discreet. And then any additional pages that um, 
we discussed earlier that should be attached, should be marked as confidential for both accounts payable and for payroll. Um, and just to brag a little bit about our new system, um, we actually have two layers of security for those account for for those invoices. Um, there's account level security and then this document level security. So um, if a person does not have access to those GL accounts, they're not going to be able to see those invoices. And if by chance someone would accidentally be given access to those GL accounts, as long as it's marked confidential on the actual document, they're not going to see any documents that are attached. Um, then on page four, um, Josh had indicated, our Commissioner Competent had indicated that he wanted to be removed as that final signer for the check run. So that's what this is doing. Lastly, the County Commission or Commission's designee shall review and certify approve it. That's removing you as that final signer. So that's what that part's doing. And then to change quick, that. Uh, quick thing, no, okay, so uh, it's not requesting me. I still approve them every single week. He approves them electronically in a system, he does. He's just not going to approve the check run certification. Uh, right now, the certification will only be done by the county clerk and the tax office. He, there won't, we won't have that third certification. So he's still approving them electronically. I'm not removing yeah. him from the electronic approval. I did it for two years. You did it for like seven months. Actually, and now he can, about it. Yeah. he can do it from home. He can do it from home. He can do it from home. My handwriting was just so bad they had to get me off the So we are still required by state code to um, submit those invoices and, and show them every week as part of our um, county minutes and they are required to be approved by the county commission every week. So to make sure that that step is not missed in any of the interpretation, it says, lastly, a listing of all accounts payable checks paid shall be approved by the commission at the next regularly scheduled commission meeting. So we're making sure that that, that step is still there. Um, and then to after speaking with Lori Bracelin, we wanted to make sure that we were, you know, not violating any HIPAA privacy laws. So the Final change is to make sure that we're in compliance with that so that HRA reimbursements will be listed as one line item that says HRA reimbursement check number whatever for $2,000 or however much it is. And each check number will be listed separately um, as, as you know per state code, but it'll say HRA reimbursement instead of Stephanie Grove got $2,000, Patsy Nolan got a $500 check. It's just gonna say HRA reimbursement. That'll get us in compliance with those HIPAA privacy laws that we were currently not in compliance with. Um, on page five, section was added to clarify um, the, the, the key and the black box that Stephanie mentioned earlier. Right now the county has been issued two Tyler Secure Check Signature Systems, that we call them the black box. The Secure Check Signature Systems are a mechanical or electrical device that is required for making the signature of the president, clerk, or sheriff. Such devices shall be safeguarded and secured in the county clerk's office. We only have two of them, and they are both secured in the county clerk's office. Um, and then, of course, we changed it back to two signature keys. And, and that's actually kind of a, a missed, it's, it's a, I used Tyler 10 years ago, and Tyler 10 years ago, you had to have that key. It was the actual signature key. It is no longer a signature key. They still call it a signature key, but all it does is remove the void off the check. So it's not a signature key anymore, even though that's what they call it. So we just changed the terminology on that to show that it is a void removal key and that they must be segregated um, from the check stock in the black box within the county clerk's office. Um, and then the last change was at the bottom of page five. This was a request that um, was made at the last stakeholders meeting that we had um, from our tax office. We've been having an issue with timing and sensitive checks that need to be um, given to our tax office, our treasurer, on a timely fashion so that she can balance and, and do our payroll transfer. So the payroll bank transfer and payroll electronic funds transfer checks, only those electronic funds transfer checks, needed for payroll process are considered time sensitive and as such will require a shortened workflow. Those checks include the biweekly funding transfer from the general county bank account to the payroll bank account and periodic electronic funds transfers to the government agencies for vendors uh, for tax, retirement, and other employee withholdings. Now some of this will change in the new system. Some of these are gonna come over automatically, but that, that biweekly transfer check is always gonna need to be cut. Um, so that is not going to change in the new system unless, uh, you know, 
other modules are brought online. So to ensure that the tax office receives the transfer information for cash balancing in a timely manner, the electronic workflow shall consist of the county administrator approving on behalf of Josh um, or the, the county's uh, clerk, the county clerk and the finance director, which um, the county clerk, the finance director, and the county administrator are already currently in the workflow. We're just kind of removing that final one that's, that's kind of been a hold up for making sure that those checks get done on Wednesday morning of payroll week. To my, just to defend myself, people tell me to do it on Monday, do it on Tuesday, I do it on Wednesday, so now it's, it's always Tuesday evening. And Michelle sent me a calendar invite for the next 10 years. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just to make sure that those checks are still being approved by the county commission, um, transfer checks must also be included in the listing of accounts payable checks paid, and that list shall be approved by the county commission at the next regular schedule meeting, see payment uh, process number six above. Um, and so any questions about any of those changes? So was this done in conjunction with the county clerk at all or any input? Yes, this, this was done through um, conjunction. I had input from our last stakeholders meeting um, and input from our, from our payroll clerk as well. Those are discussions that we've all had via email and in person regularly over the last few months about things that were slowing us up. And then uh, is there any other questions about security or anything like that in the new system? Right now we have three systems administrators. We have our IT director, IT specialist, and me, our systems administrator. And right now, every single department head, the county administrator, the clerk, everybody in their office has inquiry access to any of the administrative areas so that they can run a report or they can check on security. Additionally, um, the only person who has access to set up new um, members or new Users is actually the IT director. I, I can't set up a new user without him. The, the printers. So, is there still a reason to have two printers, or is that entirely going to be in the clerk? We purchased them, so yeah. I mean, okay. So, mm -hmm. so right. you need five things to write to to cut Print a, check a check in the yeah. new. Sorry, in the new system, you need the printer, the microtoner, the check stock, the black box, and the void removal key. Without those five things, you cannot write a check, cut a check. Is all the check printing going to be in the clerk's office yes. now? Yes, so yeah. it al it's always been there. Is it's there never any, changed. Is there any reason that the commission have that printer? Should it just be? We don't have the. We printer. don't have a printer. Oh, we, no. Didn't you say there was both? We just have. We had. Oh, both in, we oh, had a tax key. Office? Okay. Yeah. They're both over there. Okay. Yes. We had a third key that was inadvertently sent to us when we ordered the black box. Okay. You're trying to keep track yeah, of the sorry. pieces at the. Yeah, and and the third key's gone. Okay, that's fine. Then. Wait, did I'm okay. I, it makes sense to me. I mean, I don't see a problem well, it, with it. It makes sense, but does the clerk have any input on this? <coughs> when you show up with a lawyer, I figure there's got to be some input. Okay. So, what do you want to do? Um, Um, can we go to something else and then come back to that? Give them a chance to take a look at it. Do you want to? I mean, is so it's it's not very different from what was in the agenda. The stuff in green is what was added today. Everything else was in the packet. The only thing that was added today was the two the the paragraph about having two check signature six systems because that was never in there before and then we changed it back to two keys instead of three. That was the only change. I know you're addressing that to us, but I think you need to address Jackie, it. Jackie, how much Mr. time do you need to look at it? I don't believe that that is addressed in policy 305. 
I, I know the finance director mentioned it in mm -hmm. passing. I just want to be clear that my understanding is correct. I think that that is the clerk's yeah. issue. So your letter indicated that Michelle was the sole administrator, <coughs> but that's not that's not correct. Um, Russell Burgess, who is our IT director, is an administrator, at, and we used to have a, a second IT employee who was administrator. She left, and we've replaced her, but that employee has not been trained. But when that employee comes on board, they will be an administrator, and then Ms. Gordon is also an administrator of the system. So the clerk does have, a, just, to be, just to put on record, the clerk has serious concerns with, with that setup, but my understanding is policy 305 doesn't go to that. I think that that probably would be the clerk's concern with policy 305. My job description? Yeah, I mean, the, the job description for the finance director, which we did receive an attorney general's opinion on, um, has her, has the finance director administering the system. The clerk does have administrative inquiry, so she can see, and we can, she could also request from Tyler. So Tyler's maintaining this, that's the vendor. You could go in and see any changes that anybody made, including Michelle or Russ or any other person who has that administrative setup access. So I haven't seen the attorney general's uh -huh. opinion, but you know, we, we, as in our letter, we did mm -hmm. include the auditor's mm -hmm. statement. And, you know, so it seems like we do have two conflicting state agencies saying conflicting mm -hmm. things. So I, for, as the attorney for the clerk, I would just recommend or request that you delay approving this tonight if well, possible. The policy 305, is, that's not, that, it's not in policy 305. Okay. okay. Then, who, who maintains the system? I don't think, it's not in here. Okay. I, I just heard Ms. Gordon mention it. Yeah, it, I think she was just that. talking about it because the letter we received from you indicated that she was like, that she was the sole administrator, and I think she was just clarifying that she isn't the sole administrator. That, that, that's helpful. I, I don't think it changes the, the clerk's concerns. Okay. If I have to go through it, uh, Jackie, I think you're, you're good with three of Okay. All right, so I think we're ready for a motion to approve uh, uh, policy number 305, the changes to policy number 305 as discussed this evening. So moved. I'll second it. Is there discussion? One thing, I, uh, that other issue is going to come up subsequent at another meeting, I guess. I, I suppose it will, okay. yes. Right. Any other questions, comments, discussion? All in favor of approving the motion uh, to approve policy number 30, the changes to policy number 305, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That's done. Okay, so we're finished with uh, with those items uh, under county administrator reports. Do you have anything further, Stephanie? Okay. All right, so let's go to item number eight on the agenda, and that is uh, Nathan. Uh, Nathan, who... So I know that Nathan has things that are not... <laughs> that, are, that don't need to be in executive session. I wonder where he went. All right. So, Mr. Kennedy, what are, are you here for? Okay. Let's let's get Mr. Kennedy. <coughs> so he's going to go here. He's probably going to go into a second session. So Nathan has things that are not. Yeah, he has things that are not. Okay, that do not we'll have to go back to Nathan. So, yes. Were we going to reverse? Where is? There Where is? There oh, there he is. is. What? Never mind. Okay. Yes, he did. Working in the hall. Did, did. No, I was actually across on the other side, and I just happened to walk back in. And I let, yelled that right. loud that he could hear me. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. Just um, my stuff. First item. Um, we, I think we're now finished with the, um, with regarding the franchise fee audit. We have the executed agreement. Uh, that has been tendered to us. And I can just pass you all a copy of that out. I think they've already raised the franchise fees too. They wasted no time. Um, and as you will recall, this is a result of the audit um, that was done as a part of the cable uh, franchise renewal agreement. And it's a reflection of fees that Comcast should have charged, but did not do so. And so that's the resolution of that issue. Um, I'm going to move forward to. Um, Quick question on this. Yes. Just briefly. 
the franchise fee percentage normally is levied by this body, though. So they choose zero to five percent for the franchise fee, right? Um, it's a it's a discussion. It's a negotiation with the with the company, but I believe that that's the fee that's normal. So then, but this commission at some point chose that we want a five percent or whatever franchise fee on these bills. Like Ten years. Ago. Yeah, exactly. I just okay. I believe that's correct. Um, and just for the is, record, yes. I'll point out, as commissioner, I've been approached, and some people were not happy with the way we did this, but I didn't for vote for it, though, so. Yeah. Um, you know, those are just the decisions that, you know, we make as we go along the way, and that's your, um, your decision there. But um, anyway, that, that item is concluded again I would point out those are charges that Comcast uh, was supposed to have charged under the contract and did not um, and does this go in the general fund or how does this go in um, that would be a Michelle question uh, we, we put it in capital outlay right the, the cable franchise went in capital outlay it will, it will be transferred to capital but it can be used for essentially anything but it doesn't just have to, you put it in capital outlay. If you had a budget revision, it could be used for virtually anything if you did just the accounting for it. It's not earmarked for, we chose to earmark it for capital outlay. But it could be used to say, I would, we'll give the fire departments an extra 10 grand each or something like that. No, because it was actually last year's budget. It was, therefore, it's already beyond the point of doing a budget revision this year. It was in last year's budget. Therefore, state code says that any um, unspent budget from We, we vote on that, or is that just? Uh, I don't we, we would have to. Probably, I think it's unanimous. Does capital outlay have? To, does that capital outlay have to be a unanimous vote of the commission if we choose to use that money for something in particular? In the capital outlay fund? Yeah. It does not need to be. It has to be unanimous vote. It doesn't need to be. A majority vote. Majority vote. Not okay. Vote. All right. I, I'm a little bit confused as to the the different, because I know capital outlay used to mean for capital projects only. And so it doesn't, I don't know what oh, it means no, now. For it to come back out of capital outlay fund, it's it requires it. yes. Right, that's what I thought. I guess my question right. was, even though I didn't vote for the initial motion, the fact we got the check, was there a subsequent motion to put it in capital outlay or was it just a default? But when did the check get received though? So, I mean, it, essentially, we had no ability to even... We knew it was coming in this week. Okay. There must have been a slight disconnect, because, I mean, I don't disagree that being capital alley is a, not a bad thing. I just... Also, the majority voted to transfer to capital alley back then. Mm -hmm. right. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. All right. So, moving on, uh, basically everything else... Uh, due to the lateness of the hour, I'm going to skip except for two issues. Uh, that would be the second and third issues on my list. Um, the discussion of uh, the court case 18C171. Uh, that is a matter regarding uh, the uh, court recently made a decision regarding the, the pilot agreement. Um, Mr. Kennedy has been handling that issue for you as it involves uh, questions of legal uh, strategy and determination as to uh, the next step. Um, I believe that that is a matter for executive session. Uh, second, the discussion of EEOC charge, and you see the number there. Um, the second number is a new matter, and again, because that it's a question of uh, legal um, strategy. Um, I am recommending that we enter into executive session on both of those issues. I will say that um, 
um, since Mr. Kennedy is handling the pilot agreement issue, um, I'm, I may not uh, stay for that issue. Um, we will, I will definitely stay for the issue. Okay. So we need an executive uh, vote on session to for the <clears throat> discussion of circuit court civil action number 18 c 171 and discussion of the eeoc charge number 533-2017-00706 and 533-2019-01397 and i'll move that second moved and seconded is there a discussion the other two are not i'm just going down your list the other two are not going to be discussed today yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you that there's not any real thing to tell you about this. I, I do tend to leave some things on the agenda that I believe may have something pop up and uh, I have to talk to you about between the time that the agenda is finalized and the, uh, the meeting. And otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk to you about them. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor of the motion to go into executive session to receive legal advice on the uh, items mentioned previously signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to say no, but that's just to be consistent. Okay. We are, the motion passes by a vote of three to one. So we are in executive session. Do we anticipate any anything coming out? I, I do not know at this point. Okay, so I, I doubt it, but I do not know. I'm just going to wait until I hear another two votes next time and then make my decision afterwards. <laughs>